I want to determine the root cause, what got into cylinder number one and caused, wreaked that havoc. Where did it come from? And what do we have to do to fix the car so it's reliable again? So on the Volvo, we got the air cleaner tube back from the inlet of the turbo and using the test long endoscope I just want to take a look at the actual turbine blades as I spin it over with my finger and so far we're not seeing anything crazy it's you know the shaft there's no shaft play it spins very smoothly and if you look at all the blades they're all symmetrical, there are no pieces or chunks missing. They're not damaged in any way. They're not bent or chipped. Not that I can see. So this is a mystery. We want to find the root cause of what actually got into the cylinder. Where is the mechanical damage coming from? So the last thing we could do is pop out the front oxygen sensor perhaps and then look near the catalytic converter because if it got into the exhaust pipe the cat would, you know, the mesh would actually stop that debris and if there's anything there we can try to figure out where it came from but right now it's uh, not clear at all what caused the mechanical damage on cylinder number one. Well now we're fishing in the exhaust pipe, took the front oxygen sensor out going through the flex pipe towards the catalytic converter there's definitely a nugget of something like beat up metal that is it's kind of hard to maneuver the there it is I don't know what the heck that would be so I think that's the piece that got hammered in the cylinder and finally spit out So whatever, whatever it devoured, whatever it chewed through, went through, we don't know what exactly it could be. Alright, so basically where we are with this uh, failure analysis. I want to determine the root cause, what got into cylinder number one and caused, wreaked that havoc. Where did it come from and what do we have to do to fix the car so it's reliable again? Well. Uh, my friend Zia here, the owner, he found a video, right Zia? Yeah. Online on YouTube that uh, led us in the right direction. So let's, let's play it and watch. Someone said it has a check valve in it that leads to the uh, PCV breather and everything. I believe this is the one they're referring to. I'm going to take that out. All right, this, this guy bolt, right here. Which that tube leads to the PCV breather system has a check ball and pin in here mm. and somebody had posted uh, on one of my videos that these fail so it's something to be aware of I have yet to have that happen but I guess those parts can end up in the Don't intake wait. and essentially in your engine not good right so we took off power steering pump alternator to this banjo bolt lives on the inside, uh, the underside of this intake manifold right below this cylinder number one runner. We got it out and uh oh this is exactly the problem. You see that pin that held the ball in? Escaped and so did the ball. So now this is just a straight through banjo bolt and well that pin and that ball got sucked into cylinder number one, messed up the valve sealing surface, got hammered in there and got spit out into the catalytic converter. So that all makes sense. Good news is the turbo 
is fine. Nothing actually made it through the intercooler. It was just this stupid little PCV banjo bolt with the one-way check valve. The one-way valve failed, it escaped, and got caught in cylinder number one. So what's the repair here? Well, obviously we need either a new part or an upgraded part, so this doesn't happen again. As you can see, the uh, I think that pin and the ball just rattle around in there, and eventually the pin chewed its way through those that thin metal lip that's supposed to keep it in, and then boom, escaped. Carnage because of this stupid, you know, two dollar or five dollar part. Unfortunate, but we got to the root cause, and also I think that might be causing the whistling noise because this is a one way valve, right? So the ball, if it goes in the seat, it prevents flow back into, I guess, the PCV system. So when the intake manifold is under pressure, when your turbo is boosting. That little ball is supposed to be closed or, you know, shut. However, we lost the ball <laughs> and the pin, so now the boost pressure is making it through that hose. That hose is basically, you know, the air is rushing through. We're hearing the whistling and it's going back to wherever the, you know, this system is quite complicated. Hoses, hoses everywhere. But I think it goes right back into our intake before the turbo um, basically relieving if you have positive pressure um, when you're under boost you don't want positive pressure escaping from the intake manifold but you still want your crankcase to breathe so it goes upstream of the turbo anyways that's our failure so we're gonna decide what to do here look up some parts procedures labor times but uh, I think this car will be uh, back on the road in good shape fairly soon. One last check in the uh, diagnostic here. We're going to do a cylinder leak down test. So basically a compression hose, pressure gauge, and when we turn up the pressure, valves are closed, pistons up. I want to plug the PCV hole here and see that rubber glove? Diagnosed Dan style, yes, our intake valves are definitely leaking. What about the exhaust valves? Oh yeah, big leak. So if I plug this, that pressure builds up pretty quickly in the exhaust and eventually So exhaust valves are leaking pretty badly. So are the intakes. So this thing's gonna need the head pulled off and either valves replaced or at least lapped in. Alright, so I moved the piston down. Now we're looking at the cylinder walls through the side view camera. So this is the forward facing camera, that's the actual piston right there. And it looks kind of wet. So my question is. Did the cylinder walls get damaged now? Are we going to be burning a lot of oil now? Well, here's the cylinder wall. And, well, there's definitely some specks on there, unfortunately. Let's see if we can dial down the brightness. So whatever was in there, was in there for a while, and man, it really um, wreaked some havoc. You can see it's kind of like shrapnel, <laughs> little pits in the cylinder walls. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but those little pits will catch oil, and then it'll burn off on every piston stroke. So not a great... Not a great scenario here.
unbelievable what engine damage one little failed piece can cause. So let's go up here and take a look at the intake valves. These are open right now. So you want to look at the seats. So you see where the seat is shiny, that's where the valve is touching, where it's black, not quite so much. You can see there's a bad spot right there. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> so these valves might be a little bent. It's really a shame. See how hammered that part of the seat is? And then elsewhere it's uh might not be even touching. Very uneven wear from the valves. So a machine shop would be able to cut the seats and if we replace all the valves, all four valves in the cylinder. You could restore compression, but it still might use a little bit more oil. You can even see the residue. Let's open up the exhaust valves. Well, here are the exhaust valves. These are not looking too pretty. There's some... Let's see here. So the seats, you see that one looks not terrible, but this stuff right here, if the valve doesn't seal very well, then combustion gases, hot combustion gases, get past the valve seat and start melting the aluminum around the valve seat. And I think that's what's happening here, so this is really not good. See that shiny kind of molten stuff? Um, not a good scenario here. <clears throat> so we don't want to run the car for any length of time with this combustion misfire or a compression misfire. You'll see like there's something melted on top of that valve. And if you want to take a picture. Such a shame. You can see more molten aluminum there. And the seat here is really wide compared to the other valve. And right here you can almost see that's I think that's where the leak is. It's not a nice defined seat like it is here. So again the valve might be slightly tweaked. Compared to this seat here which looks a little better nice defined outline I think that's where um, where the leak is happening is right there so we're gonna price out this job take the head to a machine shop for sure make sure those valves seal and hopefully it's not burning too much oil we can do an oil check so he's gone 300 about 300 miles with this misfire The oil level is about, ooh, about halfway. Started at all the way at the top. Well, what, 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 <laughs> this is your car. What would you do? Shell out for a rebuild or new engine? That's crazy. I mean, it's such a shame. It ran so nice until that PCV valve grenade and. Tore up cylinder number one. So the customer says he wants to fix the Volvo. So now we have to make a decision, do some research. What's the most uh, cost effective and reliable way to fix this car? Yeah, we could pull the cylinder head, take it to a machine shop, replace some valves, grind the seats, all that stuff. 
However, I looked up the labor times. Hmm. Cylinder head R and R over 18 hours plus gaskets plus machine shop labor time. All that stuff is going to add up to I don't know two to three thousand dollars. Crazy. Um, what's another option? Considering the actual cylinder. Um, bore is also damaged so even if you fix the head it won't be like a new engine you'll probably have oil burning problems piston ring wear etc how about a used engine well there are some options for example if we go online 800 bucks one year warranty used engine 155,000 miles and the labor to replace the engine with transfer of parts is only 12 hours <laughs> so I think that might be the solution here and of course this is the root cause of this whole debacle this PCV banjo bolt and again doing a little research online Here's one where someone had a similar problem on a XC90 2.5 turbo. And sure enough, this part has been upgraded several times. People have had engine failures due to this. Here's the new part, upgraded part. The pin is actually in this hole that's drilled through the bolt. If you look at the original bolt it's a really poor weak design where that pin is kept in place by rolling the ends of the bolt you know it's really thin here roll it over and apparently that metal was pretty uh, pretty light so that pin eventually got hammered out by the ball and everything got sucked into the engine so this is a twenty dollar part that cost thousands of dollars to repair if if it's not replaced with this upgraded part as preventative maintenance so if you own one of these mid 2000s Volvo turbo engines replace this right now if you haven't already it's even available on Amazon there's the part number 313-25709 again less than twenty dollars I wish Volvo had a recall on this. This is a big deal <laughs> because you lose, you basically grenade your engine because of this silly little part. So, we're going to talk to the customer, see what they want to do. Um, car still drivable. We should still replace the bolt because it is a, like a PCV valve. Driving without this will cause boost, you know, turbo boost to get into the crankcase, which is not good. It could push out oil seals and whatnot. So, um, should at least replace that. Yeah, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You can drive with a misfire and burn some oil. Engine's junk anyway, so maybe he'll do that and decide what to do. But, unfortunate ending here. Kind of puts a dent in Volvo's reliability. It's a you know, great engine, everything's solid, turbo's perfect. With this stupid little PCV valve, grenades causes severe engine damage. So, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.